Hello, I'm Annette and you're tuned in to Believe TV. Coming your way, a special program, See God and Talk. Another inspirational talk show from VPA that showcases God by hearing from people who have experienced God in a mighty way. Now the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So not only will you be hearing mind-blowing testimonies from people, but you will also hear it through song and music. See God and talk right here on Believe TV, for your time has surely come. In Jesus' name. Hello and welcome to See God and Talk, a program which showcases God through mind-blowing testimonies. Testimonies where God turns the impossible to possible by using his faithful, obedient and anointed servant, Pastor Alex Omokadu, whom we affectionately call Daddy as our spiritual father. Now joining me today is Tina, and her husband, Kenny, and beautiful baby. A baby whom Tina was unsure she would ever have, following a head-on collision, which left her with life-threatening injuries, where doctors had given up all hope. But the God that we serve had a plan for her life. Not only did she recover from those injuries, but she encountered the God of VPA, the God of Pastor Alex Omokadu, where she received miracles after miracles. Tina, welcome. Kenny, welcome to the show. Tina, I know that you have given several testimonies within VPA, and I'd like to take you back before you encountered the God of VPA and before you had that horrific accident. How was your spiritual life before all of that? Yes, thank you, Annette. Um, yes, I actually, I was a Christian. I've been a Christian since I was born. I was born into a Christian family. So I knew God, I knew Jesus. I actually gave my life to Christ in 1988. Wow. So yeah, that was a little while ago. So yeah, yes. yeah I was in the, in, the, uh, in the Christian fold. And what were you longing for in your spiritual life? What, what was it that you were asking God to do for you? I got to a stage in my life when I should be, you know, having, uh, getting married, you know, m you know, moving on in life. And that wasn't happening um, for about 10 years. Yeah. It was the same prayer. I was praying about uh, getting married. I was at the stage in my life when I, I needed to, and I've got the career, I've got the, 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 the things that you, you're meant to have, yes. but yeah. there was no husband. And one of the things you said to me earlier was everyone yeah. around, around you yes. was getting married. Absolutely. But it's as if nobody could see you Absolutely. in order to approach you. And that was actually interesting because I then realized knowing something that's actually solved it doesn't give you a solution yes i knew something was wrong everyone around me was getting married yes i should get single men yes. asking me about my friends yes and then i would tell them actually no she's married or she's seen someone and i'm saying hello i'm here <laughs> i'm still single no rings yeah <laughs> um no but it wasn't it wasn't just working for me okay so we're going to we're around. going to come to when you first <clears throat> met kenny your mm. husband we'll come to kenny later on but if we can just fast forward mm -hmm. to when you had that horrific car accident, I think it was back in 2007. Seven, correct. Tell us what happened. Yeah, basically I was going to work on a Thursday morning, mm -hmm. um, just on, off the M11 mm -hmm. in you know, uh, Cambridgeshire. Yes. And yeah, I, I had a, coll a collision. I did not actually remember what happened mm -hmm. uh, because I went, it was traumatic. Yes. Uh, but when I woke up a month later, mm -hmm. four weeks later, they told me exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And until today, I still can't remember what happened. Well, because the life-threatening injuries, yeah. which I mentioned earlier, included almost a decapitation of your the arm, arm. The right your arm. pelvis. Yeah. Yeah was dislocated, dislocated yeah. broken arm, yeah. broken legs, broken ribs, broken ribs, yeah. which we can actually see yeah. there on yeah. your chest That's now, correct. where the seat belt actually cut into you. That's correct. And we do have images which we're going to show on the screen for the viewers to fully understand the horrendous injuries which Tina suffered mm. because those injuries were life-threatening as, as I've said Absolutely. earlier 
and your organs were shutting, shutting down, down, I believe. Yeah. All yeah. your major organs Absolutely. were shutting down Absolutely. one by one. Absolutely. Which is why while I was in hospital, I became yeah. like 10 times my size mm -hmm. just because there was no circulation of anything. Yes. Um, yeah. And they told my family to start preparing for my funeral wow. because they didn't think I was going to be able to make it. So yeah. the doctors had given up hope. Absolutely. So the doctors were saying to your family, prepare for the worst because there is nothing Absolutely. we can do. That's so right. how long were you in hospital for? I think in total about three months. And you were unconscious I, I was. Time. I was unconscious for, I was in a coma for uh, four weeks. Mm -hmm. Then I woke up. Um, because I was in a coma, they didn't actually address any of my broken ribs, yes. broken legs, yes. broken anything. Yes. Because if I was going to die, what's the point? Yes. So oh when I goodness. now woke up from a coma, then I started to do a lot of the operations. Uh, my arm got recon reconstructed, mm -hmm. my pair, everything I started to um, get reconstructed. So your entire body almost was reconstructed. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Oh my goodness. Literally. So you recovered, thank mm -hmm. God from your injuries. Absolutely, yeah. So what brought you to the God of VPA, to the God of Pastor Alex Amokadu? Because we all have a story. We all know how we got to the God of VPA. What is your story? Yeah, actually, I first came to VPA in 2012. Yeah. And I always say by accident. I came with my uncle. But when I Let came, me just say, Tina, it's yeah, never an accident, accident when you come to the God of VPA. Amen. Everyone <laughs> has an appointed time. God, remember, God is in our future. He knows Absolutely. when you're going to come to where he is. Absolutely. So it's never by accident, but Amen. it was your time. That's and right. God used your uncle, uncle. as the catalyst to Amen. bring you here. Amen. I, I concur. So, yeah, I came and I went through the deliverance. Yeah. Uh, before that, we actually saw, we met the pastor, mm -hmm. my uncle and I, and and pastor just told me again, obviously. So you met pastor? Alex, uh, Alex the one, on, on the one-to-one one one, one, yes. on, the, on the Monday uh, morning. Yes. And again, what was, what was number one on my mind was getting married. Yeah. When is it going to be? Yeah. And Pastor Alex said, why are you worrying about it? It's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, you don't get it. You know, I'm going to be 40. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, time is ticking. And he said again. 40 to us is a day to God. As we exactly. know, it's, it, God is, is not a God of <laughs> our time. Age. Exactly. <laughs> and um, he said, no, no, it's, all, it's already been done. But when he said that, I had to hold on by faith because I've had people say that to me in the past, yes. that your husband's already, be, already been prepared. Mm. But like I said, I've been asking for about 10 years. Mm. And for the last 10 years, I've had prophets, pastors telling me, oh, yeah, yeah, your husband is done. Mm. But I haven't seen him. Yes. So when Pastor Alex said it, I just have to breathe very deep mm. and go, I don't want to be in doubt because yes. I've had it before and nothing yes. happened. Yes. But I hang on and then he asked us to go on deliverance. Mm -hmm. And I was on a three weeks, four weeks deliverance. Yes. And after that, three months later, I met my husband. My God. And this is where <laughs> Kenny came in. So sometimes we long for our soul partner. And yes, as people would say to you, yes, your husband is coming. But sometimes God has to fix us too as mm. women because the husband mm -hmm. may be ready for us, yep. but we're not ready for the husband. Mm -hmm. So daddy always says, don't look for the microwave blessing. blessing. Look for the slow cook. And this is what we have to be in Christ. We have to be obedient. We have to wait on God because God is never late. He is always, always on, on time. time. Absolutely. So Kenny, three months after being on deliverance, yeah. she met you. So yeah. tell me, how did you, what was it like for you when you encountered our lovely Tina here? Yeah, actually, uh, I, 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 it's just a normal, we just met up and, but along the line, yes. I knew she's for me. Yes. Yeah. God you just felt that conviction I've, I've in felt, your heart. I felt it, yeah. Yes. I've never been so, so convinced like that before. Yes. Yeah. So you were on deliverance for four weeks. Mm -hmm. You met your husband. Mm -hmm. And I understand you went back on deliverance yes. because I'll let you take over from there. Actually, yeah. When after the deliverance in VPA, because don't forget, I came with my uncle. Yes. So I went back to my church yes. and I actually met my husband ar around that time mm -hmm. away from VPA. Mm -hmm. And away from VPA, I didn't think anything of it. Then about two years ago, uh, Three years ago, two years ago, life got really difficult. Yes. I was totally afflicted. You were here. You mm -hmm. received your deliverance. Mm -hmm. You went back to your church. Mm -hmm. You met your husband. Mm -hmm. You got married. Yep. But then you encountered more affliction. Affliction. In your health? Health. Yeah, it, it was mainly in, in my health. Mm. 
anything that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah. Um, and don't forget, during this time, I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I knew I was being afflicted. Again, I said before, knowing something doesn't actually give you a solution. Mm. I knew something was wrong. I was praying. Yes. But for some reason, I kept getting more afflicted. Yes. Um, what a beautiful sound <laughs> that our viewers is listening to. This is the miracle baby, and I encourage her. She, she, see, she wants to see God and talk too. So, you know, <laughs> let's thank God for baby Natalie. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I was, I was terribly afflicted. Um, then I just couldn't take it anymore. Yes. And God sees my heart every time I pray, always crying to say, the God of the Bible is real. I yes. know he's, I knew he was, he's a faithful God. Amen. But how come I'm not seeing you in my life? Mm. How can I even preach to people when I'm always in hospital? Yeah. So what sort of things were you right. going through? Because you're holding your medical, medical report reports. there. Absolutely. To show because we are a church of evidence. And these are all the ailments that you suffered absolutely just tell us a little bit about them because i believe you had a swollen leg, swollen leg. you had a scratch that you encountered on your arm um, that led to blood poisoning that's correct. you yep. had problems with your eyes <laughs> yep. you had a nail infection where you lost all your nails <laughs> and I mean, my wrist became so on. painful i could not use my hands oh my goodness yeah and this is when she recovered Fresh. from the horrendous car crash back in 2007 and where she came to VPA, she went through deliverance, she had her one-to-one -one with Pastor Alex Omokadu, he told her that she would get married, she went back to her church, she met her husband, and then what happened? She was afflicted with all these different ailments, one by one. one. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, one of, the, one of them was my, my two feet were getting extremely huge. Yes. I don't know if you can see the image. Um, yes. We will show the image yeah. for the viewers to fully understand Just what huge, you went through. Huge legs. Yes. Um, I mean, that comes and goes, yeah. comes and goes. Yes. Went to the hospital, they couldn't find what was wrong. So I just had to live with it. Again, I was a Christian. I knew I should not have to live with it. Mm -hmm. Christ has already died for me. Amen. I shouldn't have to be suffering like this, but I was. Mm -hmm. And then, then the problem with my, my wrist, my left wrist, mm -hmm. um, because of the car crash, my right hand wasn't that active anymore. Yes. So I was using my left, left. more often. Mm. Then just in my wrist, just very extreme pain. Couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So literally, I cannot do anything. Yes. Again, I knew it was an affliction. When back to the GP, they had no explanation for why. Mm, it's a spiritual attack. Exactly. Spiritual attack. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then another one was the, um, I had so many. Sorry, guys. I, yeah. I had so many. I'm trying to think. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes. Yes. I went to the Moorfields Eye Hospital four times in an emergency. I was at work and I could not see. My, my vision was just literally blurred. Mm. Blinking became very, very painful. Mm -hmm. I went there. They diagnosed me with um, cornea erosion. Wow. That means the black of my eyes has got a scratch yes. or scratches on it. So and that I could eventually lead to blindness. Blindness, yes. exactly, which is why they took it very seriously as well. Mm. Um, so they, they gave me uh, medication. So I was actually literally on medication every hour. I have to. Um, you know, you got the ointment on yes. the eyes, the, the, the liquid and painkillers. Pain and also your nails. The nail infection. Actually, I was going to say for the last 10, maybe 15 years, I usually have nail infections. Yes. Well, you know, the, the one nail will get infected. Mm -hmm. well, you start losing all the, um, the hard nails. Yes. Then I will go to the GP. They'll give me antibiotics for two weeks, three weeks. It will clear up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been like that. Yes. Again, see, this is how I got used to being afflicted. Yes. Always like that. And it will clear up. But three years ago, it would not clear up. Mm. After the um, uh, antibiotics course, mm -hmm. I did one course, two courses, to the point that the GP said, maybe we should just leave it, see what happens. My goodness. Because the root <laughs> wasn't being dealt with. You know, the medication is just dealing with a surface level. Yeah. But the root was a spiritual attack. attack. This is why it kept reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring. And yeah. this is why we are a deliverance church. A deliverance church deals with the root That's of right. a problem, the root of the affliction. So what brought you back then to VPA for the second time? Second time. And yes, it was actually uh, December two years ago. I was off work because I'm a contractor. I wasn't working. I was at home. And 
lo and behold, I was watching TV. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God, a VPA. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yes. I thought, VPA, listen, I'm so afflicted. I'm going to go back to VPA. Wow. Actually, while I was at home watching VPA, watching Believe TV, miracles started to happen already. Wow. And I thought that was amazing. Yes. Listen, again, watching VPA, uh, um, doing the pray prayer of the enough is enough. Yes. Watching other testimonies. Yes. There is power in testimonies. Amen. And one thing you said to me as well, you said that when you turned on the TV to watch VPA, just like you viewers are watching now, you said to yourself, why did I leave VPA? That's where I had the biggest mountain moved out of my life and I left. And yeah. you questioned yourself. I, I did. Yeah. I, I guess, I, I, guess I, I went back and so I thought, well, you know, I had my own church. Yes. You know, it's a, that, in the Christian dom, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. you, stay, you stay permanently in your church, mm -hmm. but not realizing that God Wherever God leads you, you must go. Amen. When your time, when your time come, your time has come. Amen. Literally. Amen. So anyway, and at that was the time I thought, I'm going back to VPA. Yes. And guess what, guys? I came to VPA with a long list of issues. <laughs> and before I knew it, my nails, well, just, they just fixed themselves. Amen. God fixed it. God exactly. fixed it. Without even me yes. actually as, not having to come to VP and start praying about my nails. Amen. I think being in the environment of an, 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 an anointed environment, Amen. things begin to work. Yes, yes. The presence of God. Of God. The moment you step foot on the green carpet, yep. which yep. a lot of people have, said. have testified to, yep. the moment they stepped on the green carpet, miracles start yep. to happen. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I knew immediately. And then I think the last time I saw the fat legs, but that was it. I, yes. I've not seen them now for the last, whatever, how long I've been in VPA. Because you also did feet washing, didn't yes. you? Oh, yes, oh, absolutely. That's Yes, yeah, I did. Uh, because they do feet washing twice a year, mm -hmm. June and in December. Exactly, uh, oh, um, yes. The um, crossover. Yes. Yes, I did. And um, again, about two years ago, I had itchy legs, mm -hmm. itchy, very... This is one of the afflictions I was going through. Yes. Legs would just be itching me, extremely itchy. Mm. Um, and then that time it was happening and uh, fit washing was occurring as well. Mm -hmm. I can't know where I've been. As, again, as a Christian, I speak to God, I pray, I command him to go. It would not go. I said, wait, I know where to go. Amen. Then I came back to VPA. My fit was washed. My husband was there with me. And that was the minute I took my feet off the bowl. I walked back to my, to my seat, literally, that was it. Instant, Amazing. instant, instant healing. This is where it happens. Amazing. The God of VPA, the God of Pastor Alex Omokadu. We are a church of evidence, undeniable. Amen. The presence of God is here. Amen. Stay tuned, join me again shortly for more of Tina's story. See God and talk for your time has surely come. Welcome back to See God and Talk, where we're interviewing Tina and her husband, Kenny, about the miraculous recovery from her horrendous head-on collision. Tina, we've spoken about Tina, the wife. Now let's speak about Tina, the mother. <laughs> You're holding your miracle child, Amen. baby Natalie, who's peacefully sleeping, sleeping. at the moment. <laughs> Now, I want to just take a step back to when you had that horrific car accident in 2007 and what the doctors actually said to you, because you asked the doctors mm -hmm. a very important question. Mm. What was that? I did. Uh, again, because of my pelvic bone, everything came off. Yes. I did ask, would I ever be able, able to have children? You know, because mm. you need your, your cervix and yes. your pelvic, you need everything to be in because place. Because your internal organs had all been... been... turned upside down. Yes. And they said they don't know. They don't know. Wow. They don't think so. Mm. But things do change, but they don't know. And but let's fast forward now. So the doctor, man, said no. no. But then you came back to VPA. That's correct. You had your one-to-one -one yep. with our daddy, our yep. spiritual father, Pastor Alex Amokadu. And what did he say to you? Yeah, that, yeah, we did. My husband and I, we yeah. came back. Uh, we had a long list of things on our list. Yes. And we came to see Pastor face to face. Mm -hmm. And the first thing Pastor asked was, how many children do you New have? Ones. Amen. And my husband and I said, no, none, none yet. <laughs> and he said, go to the altar and name your children. Yeah. Jesus. Actually, my husband and I, we thought, no, forget about that. 
we came for other things. Yes. Don't talk about children because yes. again in my mind I'm thinking, phew, that's gonna take God. Yes. You know. So where Mam <laughs> said, we don't know if you can ever have children, that's the doctor. But the Holy Spirit spoke to our daddy and said, Tell my daughter, mm. oh my God, tell my daughter to go and name your children. Say my time has come. I declare upon you, and I told you a Friday to happen. I see you getting pregnant now. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. So you finally got it. Wow. You see our God? What look impossible. Uh, uh, George, I'm telling you, it's not everywhere God is. It's not every church's God is. I told them, stay here now. Are you seeing my? Have you seen my God? What are you seeing now? The God of EPA. Yeah. The God of Pastor Tabakuda. Yeah. The God of miracle. Yeah. Signs and wonder. Yeah. The God of grace. Yeah. The God of victory. Yeah. The God of mercy. Yeah. The God of deliverance. Yeah. Daddy! God turns impossibility to possibility. Mm. And this is the possibility right here, the miracle mm. baby. Because you thought, my goodness, you're saying to name our well, children. Ch Both of you are thinking, yeah. but the doctor <laughs> said, mm. yeah, it's it may not be impossible. possible. Yeah. So you conceived yep. shortly after that. How long after that? Let me think about it. We came in it's April. Within the same year, a few yes. months, we came to see him in April, yes. and by October last year, Amen. I was pregnant. Because one yeah. of your testimonies yeah. was actually given with you being, being pregnant. pregnant. Yes. yes, yes. And it was a mind-blowing testimony. Amazing. I think the congregation, the congregation was in awe of what Amen. God had Has done. done. Because you'd previously given your testimony yeah. about your car injury, so yeah. everybody knew what you had yeah. gone through. Yeah. And then your second testimony with you, with you standing there, pregnant. So God's word came Amazing. to pass. Actually, it was when I was giving my testimony yes. uh, on a Sunday morning in church. Yes. Pastor was praying for me and he said, Go and carry your children. I see you with your own baby. Amen. And I said, Amen. Again, I hung on to that. I said, Amen. Amen. Wow. So, yeah, and the same year it happened. So, those women who are watching me now who have issues with fruit of the womb, this is a testimony all on its own. Amen. For the horrific injuries which Tina suffered. And let's just recap her arm almost decapitated major organs shutting down. She had severe burns to her legs, seat belt almost dug into her chest. What she has gone through, pelvis dislocated, but the God of VPA, the God of Pastor Amen. Alex, who made every blood cell, hmm. who made every major organ, Amen. who knew Tina before she was in her mother's womb, Amen. said, I'm going to show my mighty power Amen. and I'm going to show you when man says no, I step in. Amen. Because there is a calling on your life, Amen. on Kenny's life Amen. and on baby Natalie's life. Amen. She may be a great prophetess, when Amen. She grows up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I thank God. thank God. So Tina, what would you say to our viewers about encouraging them to hang on to their faith based on what you have gone through? Speak to our speak to our viewers. Yep, I know we all go through things in life and there's no need to manage. I know you probably have a disease, you've been told to manage it. 
Stop managing. Come to VPA. Amen. God of VPA, do miraculous things. Amen. I challenge you. Everything that you've read in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament, it does happen here. Amen. Just look at the testimony lines. It does happen and it will happen to you. Come to VPA. Amen. And Kenny, if I can just say something to you. If, what did you think when you met your wife, Tina, and she told you about the injuries that she sustained? What did you think to yourself? Um, actually, at first, I, I didn't really... It just, if it, just, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't, yes. no, it doesn't really any, I didn't read any meaning to it. I just yes. believe she's meant for me. Amen. She's, it's ordained. We are meant to be together. Amen. So all those um, afflictions she mentioned, they, it just totally out of... Totally blind, blind to it. To me, yeah. Because this is your soul partner. Yes, yes. This is... The, the flesh of your exactly. flesh, Amen. the bone of Amen. your bone, yes, yes. your help meet. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Be encouraged, viewers. Don't put God in a box. You must see God and talk. talk. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, I draw all men onto me. Don't put God in that box. Think about the bondage that God has taken you out of. Think of that affliction. Think about it. Think about the affliction he took you out of, your loved ones out of. It could mm. be affliction of health, affliction of finances, affliction of loneliness, affliction of fruit of the womb. Mm. The Bible says, whomsoever denies me before man, so too shall I deny thee before my Father in heaven. By not speaking of God's goodness, you are simply denying him. The choice is yours. Make that decision today. See God and talk, just like Tina and Kenny did. Even baby Natalie cried out today. <laughs> so join us next time. See God and talk for more amazing testimonies. Thank you for joining us, for your time has indeed surely come. Have you ever taken time to think about what your life would be like without God's intervention? Think about the bondage he took you out of, bondage of sickness, bondage of poverty, bondage of loneliness, lack of self-worth, lack of direction. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and old things have passed away. So why not thank God for those old things that have passed away in your life, and give Him the ultimate praise? Don't be silent. Let your testimony encourage somebody else. Your bondage is over that somebody else's bondage is still happening. See God and talk. Don't be silent because your time has surely come. In Jesus' name, see you next time. Bye-bye.